Suppose you had a function f whose domain is the set of natural numbers and which takes values whose range is contained in just some other set. How would you describe a function whose domain is the set of natural numbers? So we've seen if you know if you have a function whose domain is like a set consisting of a few things then you can describe that function by just saying what it does to each of those things, right? Just tell me what is f of x, what is f of y, what is f of z. And as long as x and y and z are different, uh, you can put anything you want for what these should be, and that will describe a function. But what about when the domain is this uh, one of our first seemingly infinite sets? Well. Uh, what is the set of natural numbers? The main thing we know about it is that it's an inductive set and that it's the smallest inductive set. So it contains zero and it contains the successor, the next, of anything that it contains. So the set of natural numbers consists of zero and one and two and so on, in other words, right? The proper way to say that is it contains zero and if it contains n, then it must contain the next of n. So given that description of the domain uh, in this context, how would you describe a function with that domain? So you would have to say what its value at 0 is, and what its value at 1 is, and so on. That's what you would have to do, pretty much, right? Well, people do this, and Usually they just tell you what the you know what comes out here. So they tell you, oh, at zero it's this, at one it's this, at two it's this, etc. And when they go listing things in order like this, that's called a sequence. So we can make that an official definition. A sequence is a function whose domain is n. That's all it is. And typically to describe a sequence, you would just list the uh, the outputs corresponding to the inputs 0, 1, etc., respectively. So for example, uh, let's say I try to describe for you... Okay, so uh, the, the word sequence is all about... is telling you mainly about the domain. When someone says it's a sequence, they're telling you it's a function with domain n. If someone says it's a sequence of blahs, then that tells you about the codomain. That's what the blah part says. So uh, if someone says a sequence of real numbers, then you would put the set of real numbers here. If someone says a sequence of natural numbers, then that's what you would put here. If someone says a sequence of elements of a set capital X, then that's what you would put here. So let's work with sequences of natural numbers to begin with. Let's suppose I tell you that I have a sequence of natural numbers and it goes like this. 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Now what do I mean when I just list, when I say f is this and I just list things like this in order? Well what I mean is I'm not describing a set, not something with curly braces, no, I'm describing the outputs. So I'm saying uh, I've got a function and its value at 0 is 2, and its value at 1 is 3, and its value at 2 is 4 and its value at 3 is 5, etc. Now, that does not really define a function uh, as far as the language that we've constructed so far. That does not define a function, right? Uh, if I want to define a function, then I should tell you what it is, actually, right? Like, I should tell you, here's what f is. It is this. Um, I could define it by a formula, so I could say f is the set of pairs n comma something running over all natural numbers n, and then I could give you the formula for what is f of n. Um, that would be defining a function. But just this list that I'm giving you here, that's not really defining a function. After all, uh, dot 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 is not a term or proposition or anything like that. It's not a, an element of our language that we've defined. It's just not part of it. And if it's not part of our formal language, then 
it cannot really be used in proofs. And if you have it, like if I give you this and pretend that it's some kind of definition of f, then there's nothing you can do with it, right? Like, how would you prove anything about f uh, from here? So there's just no mechanism that we have in place for working with a dot dot dot. All right, well, in the case of this particular uh, sequence here, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., you can tell pretty clearly what's meant by the dot dot dot. I mean, usually it means continue the pattern, but in this case, the pattern can be turned into a formula. Uh, so you could probably give, provide a formula that says, what is f of n for any given n? Uh, let me change color since it's getting cluttered a bit. So what, what would you say f of n is uh, if, if f of 0 is 2, f of 1 is 3, etc.? What do you think the general formula will be? So you're probably tempted to say something like n plus 2 or something like that, right? And if you say that, you're not wrong, but you are cheating. Um, you're using plus, which is something that we have not defined. And in order to define it, we're going to need machinery that is currently still under development. So uh, how would you describe this, f of 0 equals 2, f of 1 equals 3, etc.? We do have a way of writing a general formula, and that's to say it's just applying successor twice. So, you know, the next next of 0 is 2, the next next of 1 is 3, and so on. So, it's, it's clear that the dot 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 here is meant to communicate this inten intention that f is the set of pairs n comma next next n running over all natural numbers n. All right, great. So uh, now we can write things with dot dot dots and then just understand that that's communicating an intention about a general formula and that's that always works, right? Uh, not quite. So what do you make of something like this? 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. What do you make of the dot dot dots here? What is this trying to communicate? So probably you know how to continue the pattern, right? So it, it's pretty clear that the thing that comes after 8, you know, what's coming after 2? The next of the next of 2. What's coming after 4 is the next of the next of 4. And then after six, after that, the next of the next of that. And then the next, next of that, and so on. So uh, it's clear what pattern to follow. But the pattern tells you how to go from one output to the next output. So here we've got things like f of 0 is 2, f of 1 is 4 f of 2 is 6, f of 3 is 8, etc. And what's the pattern that we can notice? Uh, we cannot really come up with a general formula, right? Uh, you, might, you might think of one, something like uh, 2 plus 2 times n or something like that, but we don't have plus and we don't have times, right? These are things that uh, we are still developing the machinery to even define those. So. How in the world can we describe a function like this? Uh, a function f from n to n that takes these values and then continues the pattern in the way that we want it to. How in the world can we describe this? Well, here's how we can at least describe the pattern. Is at each stage, we're taking the next of the previous, well, the next of the next of the previous stage, right? So at each stage, we seem to be doing something to the previous stage. So f of 1 is something being done to f of 0. And f of 2 is that same something being done to f of 1. So each time you want to know what comes, what's the next output, you do a certain thing to the previous output. That's how you get the next output. How in the world can I turn that into the definition, a function definition? Like, what is f? If, if I write this down, what is f? Certainly I can describe the, this property that f has. I can say f maps natural numbers to natural numbers. I can say it starts at 2. And I can say f of... Uh, if you ever want to know f of the next position, 
then all you need to do is take f of the previous position and apply next next to that. So f of next n is the next of the next of f of n. So these three properties, this, 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 uh, these are properties of f, but they don't form a definition. Uh, at least not yet. We don't see any way for this to form a definition. Definition should be something like, here is what f is. f is this. If you have a general formula, then you can say f is the set of pairs, mapping, the, mapping you know, f maps the input n to the output, and then you say exactly what the output is, running over all items in the desired domain. If you have a general formula, you can put it here, and that would work. But we have no way of expressing a general formula for this. So what do we do? Well, what we need is uh, a tool that lets us turn information like this, like knowing the starting point, the value at zero, and knowing what's called a recursion rule, this rule for, for determining the next output of f from the, prev from the previous, uh, we need a tool that lets us turn this kind of information, starting point and recursion rule, into an actual function definition. And that is what our next theorem is going to do. By the way, I should add here that this is for all natural numbers n. So the recursion rule is always a for all n, f of next n equals, and then do this and that to f of n. Okay, so to summarize, uh, the situation. Sometimes you have certain uh, sequences, functions with domain, the set of natural numbers, where uh, by looking at the first few outputs of, w of what you want the first few outputs to be, you can come up with a general formula and define the sequence as a whole. Uh, and therefore you can make sense of this notation with the dot dot dot. Uh, and then finally you can use it in proofs. However, sometimes uh, the information being communicated by the dot 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 takes the form of uh, a recursion rule. The dot dot dot, instead of communicating any kind of general formula, uh, is really intended to tell you how to get uh, the next term in a sequence from the previous. So that takes the form of a recursion rule. And if you know where a sequence starts, like here this one starts at 2, so this bit of information here, and you know a recursion rule, if you know those two things, then it feels like that should determine a unique function. But that feeling does not translate uh, directly into a definition of a func function. Uh, to get an actual definition, like f equals this exact thing, which will unfortunately not be something we can write quite like this, since we don't have a general formula available, uh, it turns out that that will take some work. So there are two, two things that we need to uh, work out. One is given a starting point, like two here, but given any starting point actually, uh, and given a recursion rule like this one or any other recursion rule, uh, number one, does there exist a function that has that starting point as its starting point and satisfies that recursion rule? So that's the question of existence. Um, and then number two, uh, is it unique? If you have two functions that have that starting point and that recursion rule, will they be equal? So our next two theorems address these questions.